All right, welcome to this video series on the helicopter game. The goal here is to get you started making this game. We'll do a bunch of videos, um, hopefully teach you some new concepts and how to organize your code and get things going. And the end goal is to build this. I'll do some of it for you, but I'm going to leave some of it for um, you guys to figure out as well. So the main idea, it's kind of like a Flappy Bird type game or a Dino Jump. Basically, platforms are coming and you dodge them. I played this a ton when I was in high school. Um, click and hold the left mouse button to go up, release it to go down. And I added some, added a little bit of sound here. That's maybe a little loud. Anyway, these random platforms that keep cycling. And they should slowly get faster and faster. I want you to notice the helicopter movement. Is also, there's some gravity there, right? It's not just a straight up, straight down. It kind of takes a little bit to go up. And fast. Oh! Okay. And then when you hit a wall, game over. It pauses for a couple seconds, keeps track of your distance and your best time, and click to start to go again. Um, in addition to hitting platforms, if you hit the top, maybe that's a little loud. If you hit the top or if you hit the bottom, is also game over. All right, and that's it. Okay, so that's what we're going to build. Um, in the description of this video, I've got some start code, and I have that open right here. Um, basic start code has a bunch of images, um, a blue helicopter or a, or a green one if you want. I've got the explosion sound. I guess we can't see those. Um, explosion sound when you uh, get hit, and the propeller sound when you're going up. Um, and then your basic index.html, main.js, and style.css. Index is pretty straightforward, just a canvas. And our main.js, style sheet, pretty straightforward, center things, a little bit of background and margin top, and then main.js is where the fun, fun starts. Okay. So in the start code, I decided to do a lot of the drawing stuff. So we don't have to spend a lot of time drawing all the different um, elements. So we set up our canvas, set the width and the height. Um, here's where I'm loading my image. Um, I'm creating an image element and then setting its source to be right in this image folder, Heli Blue Transparent. All right, so that's going to create this variable. We'll store an image element with this source. Um, and then we've got this draw function that loops over and over again. Um, right now, all it does is print to the console draw. Let's uh, go live here so we can see that. So like I said, there's, there's nothing here. Um, we haven't drawn anything. You should be able to see, yeah, there is a canvas there. And if I open up my console, it's saying draw over and over and over again. Okay. So what else is in my start code? Sorry, this is where I want to go. In my start code, I have a bunch of functions. Um, remember function store code, right? So this code isn't actually running yet. All of this code to draw the start screen. Okay, draw start. Does our background, um, the green bars on the top and the bottom, the text on those green bars, right? The title and then the distance and best. Then we draw the helicopter image and then the start text. And that's everything that we need for draw start. But remember, a function doesn't do its job until it's told to do its job. Just like this draw function doesn't do anything until this event listener says, hey, everything has been loaded, call the draw function. Now, we can we don't always need an event listener to call a function we actually call a function ourselves so inside of my draw function here i'm going to actually call this draw start function and all i need to do is use the name of the function followed by parentheses right that's how you invoke a function same here request animation frame is a function we use the name of the function followed by parentheses now we also have something inside of the parentheses but we don't need that here Okay, so the name of the function followed by parentheses, semicolon to end the statement, and that should now call the function. And remember, we didn't, hold on, I'm going to close this one. Here's our current working version. We didn't see anything, but once I save this, it'll reload, because uh, i got live server going, and it's going to call this draw start function, and we should see the start screen. Okay, refreshed, there's my start screen. Now, I've got another function for draw game, which again draws the background, draws the green bars, draws the helicopter, and it's going to draw a wall. We don't need the start text anymore. It's just going to draw a wall. So instead of calling draw start, let's call draw game. 
and then the parentheses to invoke it. And you'll see now that it's drawing the game function. Right, that draw game function is running and it's drawing everything, um, but not the start text anymore, just that wall. All right, and then I have one other function, uh, draw game, draw game over. I'm just going to copy that. And draw game over again draws the background, the green bars, the helicopter, the wall, a circle around the helicopter to show you've been hit, and then the game over text. All right, so again, instead of doing draw game, we'll call the draw game over function. And you'll now see the game over function. Okay, so I did this because I wanted to organize it into these functions here. As, as our programs get larger, we want to make sure that we're using functions more to break up our code into logical chunks. Um, another thing that we want to do as things get larger is I'm actually going to create another file. I'm just going to call it functions.js. And I actually want to move all of these functions, control X to cut, control V to paste into this file. Okay, just to keep it organized. My main.js is gonna have the, the draw function and probably my event stuff will happen down here, but any other functions I wanna separate into here. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna save this, and we should get an error. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so draw game over is not defined. We move draw game over into another fun another file. Um, in our index.html, we have to make sure that we, uh, I'm gonna hit control C and control V, we wanna make sure we load functions.js. Okay, and it's important to make sure you load functions.js first before main.js. Um, otherwise, main.js is gonna try to call the function. Well, let's, let's do it, we'll see the, the same error here. Right, main.js is going to try to call that function, but we haven't loaded it from this file yet. So, oh shucks. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, okay. So, sometimes this is a problem. I think it's not a problem in this case because um, we're not calling draw game over until the page has loaded. Right, so it's kind of delaying. So, I thought it would give us an error, but because of that load function, it's actually saving us. But still, I think it's good practice to make sure, hey, let's load all those functions first and then run our main.js. Okay, so functions in here. Remember, these functions just store code, and then we're going to call that code inside of here. Um, I'm going to stop there. I just wanted to show you kind of the, the finished product. I wanted to give you a, a tour of the start code and kind of set up that functions.js. In the next video, we'll start talking about, I think, uh, game state and how to control which function to run, right? When do we do the start function? When do we do the game function? When do we do the game over function? All right, so we'll see you in the next video.